These are the top five things you should know about the Neuralink brain implant. If you're watching this, you probably know something about the brain implant already, but there was a lot of information in Neuralink's live stream and the related scientific paper entitled An Integrated Brain Machine Interface Platform with Thousands of Channels. I'm going to give you the top five things you should know about Neuralink's tech. How do we rank such things? By logical order. Each item will build upon the other to give you a better idea of what Neuralink is trying to do. And number five, why bother with a brain implant at all? The implant is trying to track spikes, also known as action potentials. Essentially, an action potential is an electrical impulse. A spike happens when a neuron sends information. Neuralink's brain machine interface, or BMI, can track the spikes in real time. There is no wearable that can track the spikes because you need to be under 60 microns away from the neuron for tracking. Implants are not a new thing. Neuralink also showed a history of implants dating back to 1957. So why does Neuralink want to implant tech in a brain? To get real-time data from neurons as they fire. Number four, uh, how does one implant something in a brain to read spikes anyway? Take a look at these other implant technologies. One is called the Utah Array, the other is the Deep Brain Stimulator. They are very invasive. Now take a look at Neuralink's N1 sensor. It's tiny. Here it is on a finger, and here it is next to a penny. Back to our question, how does one implant something so tiny? Build a robot. This is a surgical robot that deals with the complexity of the surgery, such as the subject moving due to breathing. The robot is under the supervision of a surgeon as electro threads are implanted. In tests, Neuralink demonstrated an average of 87.1 plus or minus 12.6% insertion success rate over 19 surgeries. Number three, does this thing work? Take a look at this cute little critter. It's called a Long Evans Rat. Two colors, aw. Well, you can buy them for experiments starting at around $23 per rat. So Neuralink tested its systems in male Long Evans rats. Recordings were made as the rats freely explored an arena. The paper says, quote, digitized broadband signals were processed in real time to identify action potentials, spikes, using an online detection algorithm. With the robot-assisted surgery, Neuralink says it implanted this tech while minimizing bleeding and reducing the risk of harming cortical vessels. So the implant is definitely capable of reading neural signals. Number two, how would this work on a human? You're thinking, hey, wait a minute. I'm not a Long Evans rat. How does this work on humans? Give me the details on what happens to a person. Now, normally, here's how traditional brain surgery goes. Your head may be clamped in place, plus your head may be shaved, with scarring being a possibility. Neuralink says they want to arrive to something different. They likened it to LASIK. No big scars, no hospital stays. It would be a short procedure, and you get to keep all your hair. Neuralink also says for its first clinical trials, the traditional method or something close to it will likely be used. Here's how the procedure would go after all the trials. You get a local anesthetic. A small opening is made in the skin. A painless opening is then made in the skull below. After that, there's a quick placement of the implant. Then the hole in the skull is filled with the sensor. The scalp is finally closed up. Then behind the ear, a small incision is made for a coil. The surgeons will tunnel tiny wires to connect the coil to the sensors. In tests, total insertion time averaged 45 minutes. And the number one thing you should know about the Neuralink brain implant is what the heck will this do? The first product is focused on control. Patients wanted the ability to control a mobile device, no caretaker necessary. Once that control is possible through the implant, the phone output could also be redirected to a computer as mouse and keyboard inputs. To learn how to use the Neuralink implant in conjunction with other devices, Neuralink has an app to teach patients. In an example, Neuralink says, imagine if you never had arms and you had to pick something off a table. You'll use the app to connect the brain activity to the movement you want to accomplish. Neuralink says it's a long process comparing it to learning how to touch type or play piano. The paper went on to say, quote, in the future, this approach could conceivably restore motor function. That's amazing. Neuralink set 2020 as an aspirational date for the first in-human clinical study. What do you think about this whole brain implant thing? Do you think Neuralink can make its vision come true? Let us know in the comments. I'm Ayaz Akhtar and I'll see you online.